July 12th, 1979, a twilight doubleheader at Comiskey Park, the White Sox versus the Tigers. Between games, 24-year-old Steve Dahl, a popular disc jockey for Chicago rock station Loop 98, would take the field at the head of his so-called anti-disco army to blow up thousands of disco records. Every day I would play a disco record and drag the needle across it, you know, and scratch it and then blow it up. But I tapped into something. There's a, an undercurrent of hatred for disco. In a few minutes, we're going to attempt the world's largest disco demolition. Admission that night was less than a dollar. If you also contributed an album. We have people come, uh, 98 cents, you get in, bring a disco record, boom. Unusual promotions were nothing new at Comiskey in the late 1970s. White Sox owner Bill Veck, one of the few owners in Shrine in Cooperstown, was baseball's P.T. Barnum. It was Veck who commissioned Comiskey's exploding scoreboard. It was Veck who in 1951 sent Eddie Goodell to the plate. By 1979, his son Mike was running the White Sox promotions department. He's like, what is this? Disco demolition, I said. We're just going to blow up some disco records and there's a guy in town who's red hot and it'll draw some people. He was like, I really did think this is going to be embarrassing. At most, there will be 5,000 people that will show up for this thing and I'm going to look like an idiot. He was worried that even if we doubled their attendance, take it to 12,000, stadiums still don't look empty. <laughs> Little did we know. This is now officially the world. There's throngs of people coming. There's throngs, and they're all carrying the albums. The late Bill Beck told me Sox Park had 70,000. First time Satchel Page pitched. There had to be 70,000 people in that ballpark. I don't know how they got in. You could see people coming through the portholes out in left field. There was holes cut out in the wall, and people were coming up through the holes. People were swiping pops out of my tray, and there wasn't anything you could do about it. You couldn't move, you couldn't go chase someone because you couldn't get anywhere. It seemed like there was kegs in every aisle of the ballpark that night, you know, because everybody was drunk. I said, you ought to have the pot concession. For what I just smelled down there, I think there must be a master load of pot here in this ballpark. Well, listen, we took all the disco records that you brought tonight. We got them in a giant box, and we're going to blow them up real good. They were supposed to just put them into a bin for Steve Dahl to blow up, but uh, obviously people brought more than one. Even before the game started, people were flinging records all over the place. The first disc that was thrown missed me by a couple of inches. It missed the right side of my head by a couple of inches. It was a real dangerous situation. I mean, I couldn't understand why they didn't delay the game. They're going, Rusty, Disco, you know, saw something real loud, and we're going to kill Disco today. Disco is dead, you know, this and that. And I'm going, you know, I was just in Disco Tech last night. How are you going to achieve that, right? The Tigers won game one 4-1. Then it was time for Steve Dahl, the disc jockey, to blow up some records. He took to the field in a jeep at the command of his ragged army. His troops greeted him as a conquering hero as he seized the microphone. Party! All these clowns who paid 98 cents to get in the ballpark were going to have their, their moment of glory, and I thought it would happen very rapidly. One, two, three, boom! Yeah! That looked like real good! I mean, there was a flash and a stream of broken albums. Like, everybody just was stunned. Center field disappeared. I mean, there was a crater in center field. It was unbelievable. With the crate and its contents in shards on the outfield grass, Dahl enjoyed a victory lap of sorts and left the field. He could not have known that disco demolition was just getting started. As White Sox pitcher Ken Kravick went to the mound to warm up for the second game, a few fans abandoned their seats and headed for the field. 
all of a sudden, you know, one person right on the field and another and another. Left field, right field, box seats. It was almost like a bunch of lemmings. It just was like the floodgates opened up. We saw that there was no security stopping us, and uh, we just said, hey, let's do it. Jimmy Pearsall back in the ballpark, and I'm sure glad, and I hope they don't let you people see what's going on here at Comiskey Park. One of the saddest sights I've ever seen in a ballpark in my life. This garbage of demolishing a record has turned into a fiasco. You were outraged. I was. I was just, you know, Major League Baseball is Major League Baseball. It isn't a rat race or a bunch of idiots who probably had never gone to a game in their life hurting the game of baseball and hurting baseball in Chicago. The baseball is no longer the story. It's this crowd and the White Sox may have to forfeit the second game. Watching the fans slide down that foul pole was like, oh my God. I mean, the field was on fire. You know, it was on fire. I've never seen a baseball field on fire before. To see this happening is a disgrace. It was the worst promotion in the history of the world. This is Belbeck. Please clear the park or we'll have to call out the game and close the park. I saw people steal home plate, dig up home plate. They dug up home plate. I saw a lot of people running the bases, having simulated baseball games, which was kind of cool. They were ripping the field apart, kids jumping up and down on the tarp. I'm pretty sure that I saw two people having sex behind third base. Not even Harry Carey, then the White Sox announcer, could control the frenzied crowd. Can you hear me out there? My friends and I went and sat in the Tigers dugout. We were passing around the Jack Daniels, and one of the coaches came out and he said, uh, son, give me that bottle. And my, yes, sir, I gave him the bottle, and he goes, now, son, get out of our dugout. After nearly 20 minutes, Carrie and Bill Vec tried again, beseeching those who'd stormed the field to return to their seats. They even broke into song. Their efforts were futile, as was the incongruously polite tone of a message on the scoreboard. The fans simply wouldn't surrender the field for the second game. Now the police are out on the field. Boy, oh boy. They rode in on their horses, and the kids just ran for the hills. After nearly 40 minutes of mayhem, Comiskey Park's field was pockmarked with divots and debris. Keep watching, you see puddles of where beer and, and stuff was wasted on the field. There was glass broken out there. It was, it was a mess. With the anti-disco revelers finally off the diamond, the grounds crew attempted to make the field playable. Even as Tigers manager Sparky Anderson argued it would be impossible to play. Dahl's army had demolished disco, and in the process, Comiskey's field. The umpire in chief and the president of the league has declared that the playing conditions on the field will not permit them to play the second ball game. The White Sox were forced to forfeit. There were 39 reported arrests, but only minor injuries, among what some say was the largest ever White Sox crowd. It was a disastrous evening from, from my standpoint. There are no number of tickets that you could sell that would make it worthwhile. Dad thought I got hustled. He was always of the opinion that the station knew that it was going to be a lot bigger than I had any idea. I always took one great offense more than anything else. Don't blame us. We did a promotion that overworked. You got to give them credit, though. I mean, they did get a big crowd at the ballpark. That's stupid. You're stupid for saying that. <laughs> I want to tell you right now. <laughs> You talk to people in the radio business and they'll tell you that overnight <laughs> stations stop being disco stations. The Bee Gees actually blamed me for killing disco, which I thought was a victory for me. I took that as a win. We did a promotion that, that caused a forfeiture. I regret that. As a cultural event, I'm kind of proud of it.